Today, like I said, we just came off of this series that is like super intensive and tons of scripture every week. We thought we'd keep it a little bit lighthearted today, but the topic being love goes first. Love goes first, which really kind of started in, in the, uh, the communion aspect because thinking about, you know, while we were dead in our sin, Christ died for us. He loved us before we ever even had the opportunity to love him. And, you know, and, and, and I love the paradox, the kind of the, the interesting dynamic, because the legalistic crowd that loves to hammer you with what you're supposed to do and that you need to obey the gospel. And it's like, yeah, of course you need to obey the gospel, but you only really truly obey when you've responded first to his love for you. So the way that you fulfill God's greatest commandment is to respond to him loving you. You love, we love him because he first loved us. He commanded us to love him and him alone. He's the one true God. Amen. So it's like he rigged the system. He's like, look, it's like he's commanding you. Let me love you. I command you to let me love you. Like that, that's, that's how rigged it is that all we have to do is say, okay, well, I'm just going to actually let you love me then. And then, then when you actually truly encounter that and experience that, that then compels, that is the power, that is the compulsion to live out everything else that's associated with the Christian life is you responding to his love for you, you recognizing how valuable you are, and then that becomes your lens toward other people and you move toward them in that regardless of what they've done, especially in marriage. We're going to talk some about marriage today, but in relationships in general, especially with your kids and those people that have hurt you, those siblings, those parents, those grandparents, those co-workers, whatever it is, I want this to stick in your mind today. Again, it's very simple, but this idea, love goes first. Love goes first. If we are to truly show the world what God looks like, then we have to set aside That stuff that they've done to us and love them. It's the simplest thing, but it's also the most powerful thing. Amen? So I've got a couple of passages. You want me to share those, or do you want to share a little bit first, or what do you want? Um, I'll share a little bit first. Okay. So what God kind of put on my heart, um, first of all, was kind of to go back um, to before Clint and I. And I know I shared my story a little bit before, but I was lost. Um, I was saved Um, just from a thing in high school, but really wasn't walking with God. I didn't know about the love of God. I didn't know about relationship. And so he kind of just kept putting that into my life. And especially when I first met Clint, um, I was dating. I was in college, living a crazy life. And I think the only thing that I really had on my mind was finding true love, like I was missing that love. I didn't have a father really growing up. And so like that was on my heart. And I'm so thankful that God brought him into my life because it was a whole different type of love that I never really thought about. But first um, in the relationship, like I met the love of God um, because right after Clint and I started um, hanging out together, we went to church and it was a grace-filled church. It was a love of God church. It was a good, good father church. And that is what I needed. And but, but I up feel and, like this is on. Uh, it's on. Can y'all hear? Yeah. Um, but, but, it, but up until then, I didn't know anything either because I wasn't raised in a Christian home and didn't really know much other than I wasn't going to hell anymore. That was my salvation experiences. <laughs> More to that. But... Uh, yeah, you yeah know, I, mean, I, I remember watching the healing that you went through because your dad left when you were like two. You never really met him. You never knew him. You, you, you kind of reconnected with him when we first started dating. But and he, I had a lot of abandonment issues. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was like that song. I always think about Eddie Murphy singing, Wook and Punub. Wook and Y'all know that skit. <laughs> Where did that wait now? How did that, how did that relate? <laughs> I'm trying to. I was looking for love in, oh, in all, all the, the wrong, wrong places. places. I got you. I just, I was looking for that love of God. And when we, when we walked into church and they were raising their hands and they were praising God and they were talking about how much God loves you and talking about the identity of Christ. And that was like what I needed. And so 
like even before I fell in love with Clint, I got to experience that love of God. And I'm so thankful for that. But we did have a lot of growing up to do. Yeah, we were young and dumb and not raised in church, either no. one of us. So we no. made a lot of mistakes. Oh, some big ones. Um, do you have that picture? Oh, you got a picture? <laughs> it was in my memories this oh, morning. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't know that one was coming out. Can I just say that I think that's a hurricane in my hand. Yeah, we were in New Orleans. In New Orleans, and I don't remember that picture, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> Check out that goatee, though. So this is pretty much what Clint looked like when I met him. I met him on his 21st birthday like a in punk. a bar. Um, we had a mutual friend, and <laughs> <laughs> like I said. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were whipping that one out. It was in my Facebook memories this morning. It's uh -huh. a picture of a picture. That's why it looks so bad. But, and we didn't have cameras back. We didn't even have phones back then. Oh, well, okay. Anyways, that's why it's a bad, <laughs> that's why it's a bad picture. We didn't have iPhones. You can take that down now. Put that other one. <laughs> but anyways, in this church, they were teaching identity. And identity, and uh, Adam was just talking about identity. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what God was speaking to me is as we learned more about our identity in Christ and who God was in our lives and how he is the good, good father and, and how, you know, we just grew in him. And I feel like as the more, the more that we learn about our identity in Christ, I feel like the better our relationship got. So it's almost, I mean, we had some great moments. You know, we've been married for, um, 24 years this year and, um, been together for 26 years and you know we've had some great moments but I feel like as the more and more that we learned about the love of God the more our relationship grew and, and it and it really defined the relationship you know and I don't I don't want to just talk about us because I want it I want it to relate to where we are in our lives you know some of us have kids that are like that punk in that picture right there, right now, you know? And, and you're, you're wondering, is, are they ever gonna get their stuff together? And it's like, <clears throat> because, you know, on paper, if I can say it that way, you know, we really shouldn't have worked because I came from a, a household with an abusive father and a mom that had insecurity issues and you had a dad that left you and abandonment issues and looking for nub in all the wrong places and a mom <laughs> that was trying to survive on her own, you know, and, and it's like, most most relationships that start that way, they don't last for one thing. But us both experiencing the love of God, being becoming whole in ourselves, and then God being able to work through us is, is something that I think that... And, and, you know, we gave each other a lot of space in the beginning, and, and still do, really. I mean, you know, there's not a whole lot of demand and expectation, I feel like, that we have on each other. Um, so it's worked. Happy 24. That'll be in April, though. Or May. I'm sorry. April's your birthday. The other, the other thing I was going to say about identity, too, um, you know, if you are married or if you are single and, and looking for uh, a mate or not, not looking for a mate, but the biggest thing that you can do to have that peace in your life, to have that love in your life, to have that just growth in your life is work on your identity. If you don't know that God loves you unconditionally, if you can't wake up in the morning and just be focusing on that and not be beating yourself up or not, um, you know, when it comes to marriage, if you're having issues in your marriage, you probably need to work on your identity. And, it, you know, your mate may need to work on it too. And that, that might be something that you do together. But I feel like that is like, the basis of a good relationship because that's what we do right it's like my problem is you and if you'll fix you then i'll be happy i mean you'd be surprised how many times i've heard that same kind of idea sitting in a counseling session you know it's like i'm good they got some work to do and, and it, you know that may be true on a certain level but there's always responsibility that we must take and so again i want this to stick in your mind Love goes first. When you're asking your spouse for the 12th time that week to pick up their underwear or do the dishes or, 
You know, you just really never bring the flowers in or you never this or that, it, you know, it's like, no, love goes first, yeah. you know. So it's, it's kind of marriage tune up and, and we don't really do a lot of this type of thing, but I, I think it's helpful and productive. So I have a couple of passages that I want to get to. Did you have anything else? Uh, I wanted to share that scripture when we got engaged that you read. We should have brought that one. We we were old school selfie takers. We yeah, we got we went camping on Cumberland Island. Anybody been to Cumberland Island? It's off the coast no? of South Georgia. It's beautiful. Um, no, there's no hotels or anything. <laughs> only camping over there. There is a small inn there, but we went camping. For, I proposed at sunrise because I wanted it to be new beginnings. We need to take the kids there. When are we leaving? Yeah, let's go. Y'all ready to go today? Oh, it's so amazing. Today. Today. Anyways, um, we got... Oh, the selfie thing. We have a photo. That's what we should have yeah. taken when we got engaged. With our little camera. That we're we just got. rambling today. Y'all good? We're good? Yeah. Not oh, yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> um, so he read a scripture to me before we got engaged, and of course I was crying. It was on the beach at sunrise. I kind of forgot about it's that. It's quite romantic. Um, he read the scripture, Matthew eighteen twenty. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, therefore I am in the midst of them. And I, I never forget this scripture because I feel like everything that we do in our marriage, it all goes back to having God in the middle of us, Jesus in the middle of us. Like that is our primary focus of day to day. Yeah. So you kids that are looking for love, start, you know, knowing that you are loved. But so two passages, um, John 15, 13. Greater love has no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. You know, so I'm just thinking about what does this look like going forward in marriage? My kids are here. They're getting along right now, but they argue over the dishes. Well, I did my dishes and she didn't do hers and I'm leaving hers and I'm not going to do it. It's like, well, what would love first look like? And what would that do to the, look, he's laughing. He's like, meh. <laughs> You know, it, it's, it's kind of no-brainer stuff, but don't we forget? Yeah. And don't we cause so much pain for ourselves because we forget just those little simple acts of love to put love first, love going first. And Jesus even says, there is no greater love than for you to get over yourself and love somebody. Yeah. So just say, get over yourself and love them. But we do that, man. It's like we got really good excuses for being upset. Don't we? And, and then we do the thing of, well, once they do this, I've asked them 50 times to do this, and once they do it, then I'll start loving them. Well, what if it takes you loving them first for them to see their value or how much you appreciate them or care about them? And even with our kids, you know, in relationship with your kids, I would, t so like love language. Can I tell our love language story? Is that all right? I'm going to anyway. <laughs> The one where I told you mine and your response? Oh, like three years ago. Is that okay? Yeah. So, so we did the love language thing with the kids. And mine is act, one of mine is acts of service. It's like, don't, don't pepper me with what you think I want to hear. Show me. Yeah. Don't tell me, show me. And so I was, we we're, again, the dishes. And it was like, listen, <laughs> I just want you to know. This actually, I appreciate it when you take the time to do this because it communicates to me that you love me and it, and it shows me that you're thinking about this, you're thinking about the relationship, and when I come down and it's done, we don't ask that much of you. You know how the parents, we go, we give them our spiels. <laughs> and it's like, it, it, mean, it, it helps me, it makes me think that you love me and makes me feel loved and experience the love in our relationship when you do that for me. That's my love language. And she goes, well, can't you just have another love language? <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> I mean, I, and I looked, I, I think I laughed and I was like, oh my goodness, that is hilarious. But no, I ain't changing for you. I was going to say something on that too, because when we were at um, Bible college, Jim was big on, you know, doing the love languages and then also learning the disc know, profile, about the disc behavior profile. patterns. And so... And there's, you know, I think you're going to do something else uh, to go along lines with that. But 
And there's, there's so many different little tests, and you don't have to take a bunch of tests, but in conversation, finding out like what that other person cares about, because yeah. like there's certain things that I care about, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm pretty laid back, but there's certain <laughs> things that I care about more when it comes to holidays or communicating or when we, if we're arguing about something, each person is gonna relate to it in a different way and process it a different way. So you gotta find those things out and then I would say even find those things out, you know, if you're just, you know, not dating or whatever and you're trying to get there yourself in a place where you can experience love or you want to have this great relationship, you need to know those things about yourself too. Because, you know, it's a great way for a loving, Jesus-following couple to show the world what it looks like to be united to Jesus, you know. And that, because he says that in John 17, our love for one another will be a testimony to the world. I mean, in different places, but in 17, he says, our oneness because of our love for one another will compel the world to believe that God sent Jesus for them too. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think we forget about it. We forget that our marriage is something to be cherished and not put on display, but people are watching. People are paying attention. You know, if, we, if you want to be evangelistic, Having a thriving, loving marriage is a great way to do it because people don't know what it looks like to have a supportive, loving relationship. I want to know what Blake and Lyle are sharing. You got a scripture for us? I'm calling him out. Uh, first John from Second Opinions. <laughs> so let me read this one because on your point, I have actually some homework for everybody. Wait, hold on one second. Okay. So this morning on um, the YouVersion Bible app, I just opened it up thinking there might be something that, um, to share today, and it was actually a scripture, and it was talking, the whole little story for today on the YouVersion was about brotherly love, and they were talking about siblings and stuff. Hello. She's talking to y'all. <laughs> um, but the scripture, that, that the scripture of the day was Romans 12.10, and it said, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. And that kind of went along with what Daddy was saying about outdoing one another. And they do. Y'all do a good job of that. Uh, so this last passage here in Romans 15, I want to read this, and then I'll give you your homework. And then I think we actually have time to close in worship. You guys want to, does that work for everybody? Do another song at the end here? Yeah. Uh, so Romans 15, this just kind of sets the idea of in light of everything that we're talking about, how does it relate to you? Remembering love goes first, but then this idea being collectively, you know, I, I would love for us collectively as a church to make this our goal going forward. Yeah. Uh, so Romans 15, 1, we who are strong, are you strong? I'm strong. You didn't say it. I'm strong. I'm strong. Okay. We who are strong ought to bear the failings of the weak and not please ourselves. Wow. Actually, uh, Hans read this in our men's group this past Wednesday. It's something that had been on my heart. It's just cool how God confirms that type of stuff. But think, think about that. We who are strong ought to bear the, bear the failings of the weak not to please, and not please ourselves. Wow. Yeah. Man, aren't we self-centered? Yeah. It's like, I need to be happy. I need to pursue what helps me, you know. So let's keep going. Verse 2. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good. It's like, gosh, you kind of forget stuff like this is in the Bible, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious, but to see it spelled out so plainly is awesome. So each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those... Uh, who insult you have fallen on me. So he's taken it already. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God, the, the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. But let me go back to that. I just want to read those first couple again. You who are strong, bear the failings of the weak, not to please ourselves. Because we, we're pretty quick. Now, 
don't throw aside healthy boundaries, and I'm not talking about jumping into codependent relationships where you're doing more for other people than they should be doing for themselves, and you want something more for them, and you're doing their part when really they should be doing their part. We're talking about healthy, whole relationships, but... When someone is in their failings and weaknesses, like Christ, who when we were dead in our sin, died for us, you know, how can love go first? How, and I, I almost want to give you this homework. Find somebody in your life that you have cut off and thrown away and figure out how can I reintroduce a little bit of love toward that person, a little bit of love toward that relationship, because you need it, they need it, and it brings glory to God. Now, I know that's kind of a big thing, just go find somebody that you hate and love them, right? <laughs> but you and the Holy Spirit work that out of what that looks like. You may not have a specific situation in mind because you guys are all just big love bubbles and you don't have any problems with anybody, right? Yep. Love bubble. That's a theological term, love bubble. <laughs> it sounds like love bubble in the Greek. <laughs> Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up laying ourselves down. And, you know, it, it seems trivial, and it, I don't always like to talk about just kind of the in-home things, but honestly, think about that with your spouses, with the people that are in your life, the people that are, you know, what, in whatever way that you can, when you have something and you're looking at. So a big one, a big one is this, and, and this is something that I learned and probably could even get better at is, you know, when, you're, when you have a positive thought towards someone you're sharing life with, like, just go ahead and share it. How many of you have struggled saying nice things to people? Yeah, two people. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> if you pay attention, though, you'll be thinking about it. You'll think about how much you appreciate about what they did or you just notice something small. You know, let's make it a habit of communicating those kinds of things. Yeah. But also this, where are you withholding love because of your own selfishness? or because of your own pleasure. And I don't mean perverted pleasure. I mean where you get to keep your peace and everything's fine with you, but you don't really feel like doing that because oh, it's inconvenient and it's their problem anyway. You know, I think if we make it a habit of not leaving things on the table to be their problem, but again, not stepping, the bound, stepping across boundaries into codependency, but when there's something that may be inconvenient for you, whether it be they keep doing this, you know, I'll, I'll use the dishes again or they need to do something in their life to take care of their cars or their school or something that you see that this person keeps doing that's an inconvenience to you, but you continue to help them. You know, it may take... Uh, so we were in prayer this morning, and um, Jimmy brought up the idea of this minister that we were talking about, and he was mean before he got saved. And his wife, I like the phrase that you used, you said, she never struck back with anger. She always loved him, and then in turn, this guy finally experienced salvation and got baptized in the Spirit and then became, you know, this incredible, powerful minister. But because in the home, she got to show the love. She got to show love without responding carnally. It's like Christianity 101, and it's so basic, and I know you didn't learn anything today, but be reminded of this one idea. Love goes first. Take care of your neighbors. Do something for them to build them up, not for your own pleasure, right? How, how, can we, how can we put those lenses on? How can we put that filter on to get over ourselves and go first because he first loved us? Because it's not, see, you're not doing these things to make God happy, right? And you're not doing it to earn a blessing. And you're not doing it hoping that you're going to jump in the sack that night. You know what I mean? You're doing it because it develops a character within you and it brings, actually brings glory to God. It's almost as if the world is watching and, and not that you're trying to pretend, you know, like you're in some movie, but you, every action is dis on display in some way. And we all want to show God. I mean, that's what this church is about. You coming in here and becoming whole, learning who you are, and then showing the world how good God really is. You can reflect that in these choices of love going first. And how can we do that? And, and so even today, when you go home or when you're, you know, something that I'm thinking just, just popped into my mind. We went out to dinner uh, Friday, and Sarah said, well, so-and-so opened their door. She wasn't not like nagging. Oh, did you notice how they opened their door? It was so sweet. And it's like, well, that's a clue 
she wants me to open her door for her, so I, love goes first, and right? And they pulled out the chair, too. And they pulled out, I carried your chair. <laughs> Final thoughts? Well, and this might be a little off subject, but I did have it on my heart to share about if you're the one, too, that is watching this or listening to this and you're struggling with even loving yourself, um, because I know a lot of us struggle with that, yeah. um, that's something that you need to work on. You need to go to God and learn about that identity again. Um, learn that you are more than enough in Christ, that you have the mind of Christ. You can do all things through Christ. But you got to work on learning to love yourself and knowing that God loves you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can't be whole without that. So here's your homework. And I do this in premarital, marital counseling all across the board. And uh, it, it can be pretty powerful if you put it into practice. And we've talked about it before, but the homework is this. Those of you that are married, it's pretty easy how to apply it. Those of you that have other kinds of relationships that you're involved in, you can practice it in some way as well. Or those of you that are dating, whatever it looks like, however this applies to you. But I call it the top five list. That is, find out the top five things that make that other person experience love, feel love. Now, not, you know, not the Tom Cruise, Renee Zellweger, Weger, you complete me type thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you are not their wholeness. You are not their completeness, but as they know God's love for them, you just get to express love toward them. So that find out the top five things that cause that person to feel loved, and then guess what? Do it. Yeah. Say do it. Yeah. You know. So uh, and and do it because you want to. Do it because you want to express love. It can repair a relationship. Just some acts of kindness. You know, some effort toward that. And so what you do is you swap those lists. You take some time, write those top five things out. You know, this really makes me feel loved. And, and usually when you swap those lists, it doesn't have like, I want you to build the Taj Mahal in the backyard. <laughs> or I want you to take me to the moon. You know what I mean? It's like they're usually very reasonable things on the list. Like I would like for you to go shopping every now and then. I would like for you to take care of the cars so I don't have to think about it. I would like for you to... It's my list. Yeah. Well, the, you know, uh, flowers every now and then, you know. So it, it, it's usually, and, the, and you look at it and you're like, Pfft. it's usually, you, we minimize it, but it's just so easy. And we overlook these, op these opportunities, but man, it, it doesn't take that much effort. And what it does is it teaches us how to get over ourselves, actively love that other person, which really just teaches your heart to follow God because they're, outside of that marriage, God is calling you to love people, and the world needs it. You know, those of us in here, you've been in this church for a while, you're listening to these messages, you've been walking with Jesus for a while, you know, that you don't really need to learn that much more stuff. You know, Christianity is not about learning. It's about loving. It's about letting Him love you and then turn that love toward the world so that God can have as big of a family as he possibly can. We want Jesus to get everything that he paid for, and that is other sons and daughters in his kingdom. That will that he gave us in his blood, that, he, that the inheritance is life with God eternal, right? Life with God eternal. That's what we want people to experience. I mean, we're after souls. And if our relationships can be a reflection to people, isn't it worth the effort to love one another so that we are experiencing that goodness in our own relationships, but then that gets to be used as a testimony because people are looking for evidence. They may not believe the seven, six-day creation and all those animals in a boat, but they'll look at your marriage and see that God is real. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Top five list. You're going to do it? Also, we have tons of teens. The band in, can make their way on. We have here. tons of teens in here. You know, don't take this or write it off as this is just about marriage. You can write your five, top five list. You know, I see lots of teens in here. Write your top five list, or or if you're not dating, or if you're, you know, whatever. Everyone can write your your top five list. Everyone can, you know, write out a list of maybe what you want in a mate or what you want dating to look like and but then first work on that identity. I, I heard that, like when I was getting my mind together and you know, 
started following Jesus before we met. <clears throat> I had heard that in a sermon, I guess, and I did that. I remember making a list that had about 15 things in it. And then I found that list after we'd been dating for about a year and read that list. And I was like, oh my goodness, she is every single point on this list. And it was, it was so awesome. Did it include doing your laundry? Yes. <laughs> Actually, no, but okay. that's, a, that's an inside joke. I was thinking, I was wondering if you were going to tell that, but no, we'll go. So, awesome. Thank you for, you know, letting us. This, this is different, but I had fun. Maybe we'll do this more often, huh? Yeah. Love you. <laughs> so, um, we, we won't close like we normally do, but I would just encourage you, be generous. Be generous. We have some things that we want to do with this church. Like send the Kretzus halfway around the world. There, you guys are what 50, 60 percent funded, something like that. 60. So, you know, there, there's room there. Be generous, give, love goes first. Amen. So, let's just stand up, put our attention on the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much that we are safe with you, that you are not holding our sin against us, that you have cleared the air through the blood of Christ. We are in you forever. You have joined yourself to us, and we worship from a place of completeness, wholeness of relationship, thankful towards you for how much you love us, all the effort you went through to restore that relationship and give us even more. We love you, and we trust you, and we worship from a place of rightness before you already. Amen.